There are some stars who have showed up on screen for just a handful of minutes, yet still manage to snag acting's most prestigious prize. Often, these are supporting actors who steal the spotlight in a few seconds, but at least one leading man won his Best Actor award for barely any scenes at all. Some popular films stand the test of time, while others fade into obscurity. Sadly, Shampoo falls into the latter category. The 1975 satire tells the story of a hairdresser, played by Warren Beatty, who's juggling multiple women while trying to open his own salon. The movie was a major hit at the time, raking in nearly $50 million at the box office. It also impressed the members of the Academy, as it nabbed four Oscar nominations. However, the only one to go home with the gold was Lee Grant, an actress who was on screen for just around 18 minutes. Grant won the Oscar for playing Felicia, a lonely housewife who's trying to keep her adulterous husband's attention while conducting her own affair with Beatty. Felicia is whiny, wealthy, well-dressed, and simultaneously lustful and lonely. Even though she's only on screen for about 17% of the film, it was enough to impress the Academy. This was Grant's third shot at Oscar gold, after getting nominations for Detective Story and The Landlord, and she finally won the prize that night. Sadly, despite her award-winning performance, it seems Shampoo has been scrubbed clean out of the pop culture consciousness. The Silence of the Lambs isn't your typical award-winning film, but it shattered all Oscar expectations by becoming the first proper horror movie to win the Best Picture Oscar. It was released in February 1991, and 13 months later, it somehow crushed all the more award-friendly films released during Oscar season. Most importantly, it's one of only three films that have won the Big Five Oscars – Best Picture, Best Director, Best Screenplay, Best Actress, and Best Actor. Crazier still, that Best Actor award went to a man who was in the film for a mere 16 minutes, but every second he's on screen is absolutely electric. Anthony Hopkins beat the likes of Robert De Niro and Robin Williams to win the Oscar for his turn as a sophisticated psychopath Hannibal Lecter. Years later, people still talk about his performance and quote some of his most iconic lines. A census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. From the moment he appears on screen, Hopkins radiates pure evil. While he rarely raises his voice, he commands every scene he's in, and with his unblinking eyes and perfect posture, he totally unnerves audiences. Sure, Hopkins only shows up for 14% of the film, but every death-rattling, bone-chilling moment is worth its weight in Oscar gold. Yeah. That was good. Pity about poor Catherine, though. Tick-tock, tick-tock. After earning a Best Actress nomination for Rachel Getting Married, Anne Hathaway got a second shot at Oscar Gold with Les Miserables, an epic musical set in 19th century France. Hathaway shows up for a mere 15 minutes in a movie that runs nearly three hours long. But while she only appears in 9% of the film, she won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress. Hathaway threw herself into the part completely, losing a shocking 25 pounds and cutting all her hair off. She even went so far as to study prostitution, and hearing the sad stories of modern-day sex workers took a major toll. Then there's the performance itself. Whenever Hathaway opens her mouth, she's singing at the top of her lungs, and on top of fitting all those crazy notes, she's also acting her heart out. She's desperate and lost and trying to survive. She's angry and hyperventilating and falling apart. Once again, she's doing all this while singing, and her rendition of I Dreamed a Dream is absolutely devastating. In short, she definitely deserved that award for breaking her hearts in just 15 short minutes. In the 80s and early 90s, Kim Basinger found frequent work in films like Never Say Never Again, The Natural, and Tim Burton's Batman. But in 1995, she took a break from acting for a couple of years until director Curtis Hansen tracked her down. Hansen was adapting James L. Roy's neo-noir novel, L.A. Confidential, and he thought Basinger would be perfect for the part of Lynn Bracken, a sex worker with a heart of gold who also looks a lot like Hollywood legend Veronica Lake. Originally, Basinger wasn't interested in the part, as she was sick of playing characters defined by their sex appeal, but Hansen convinced her to take the role, and Basinger made Lynn Bracken more than just a blonde bombshell. Even though Basinger is only in the film for 15 minutes, she makes the most of her limited time, sharing intimate moments with Russell Crowe and telling off Guy Pearce with a powerful monologue. I see Bud because he doesn't know how to disguise who he is. I see Bud for all the ways he's different from you. It was a standout performance that caught the attention of the Academy and earned the star an Oscar for Best Supporting Actress. 
During the 2000s, Woody Allen kept himself busy, directing at least one movie every year. Almost all of those films have been completely forgotten by time. Vicky Cristina Barcelona has pretty much suffered the same fate as the rest of Allen's films from that era, but there is one little detail that saved the movie from total obscurity. It features an Oscar-winning performance from Penelope Cruz. In fact, Cruz won a truckload of awards for her turn as Maria Elena, the fiery and suicidal ex-wife of a womanizing artist. She only shows up for 15 minutes, but she crushes it in every single one of her scenes. Whether she's defiantly speaking Spanish, wildly trying to shoot Javier Bardem, or making out with Scarlett Johansson, Cruz is a star of the show. Even though she was up against some major competition from the likes of Amy Adams and Viola Davis, it should come as no surprise that Penelope cruised to victory thanks to those stunning moments. Alan Arkin is one of those actors who should have won an Oscar long before he finally did. The man was nominated twice, and he had plenty of other powerful performances in other films as well. Thankfully, Arkin got his well-deserved trophy at the 79th Academy Awards for his performance in Little Miss Sunshine. In a movie filled with amazing actors, Arkin stands out as a larger-than-life Edwin Hoover. He's a dirty old man with a foul mouth, a fondness for drug use, and an incredibly grumpy disposition. But while Arkin earns plenty of laughs with colorful language, he also turns Tugs on the old heartstrings and scenes like the one where he tells his tearful granddaughter that she'll never be a loser so long as she tries to accomplish her dreams. You know what a loser is? A real loser is somebody that's so afraid of not winning, they don't even try. Even though he's only in the film for a scant 14 minutes, he proved he was definitely a winner when he snagged that Oscar. 1976 was an incredible year for film, and an even better one for supporting actors. Network, Marathon Man, and Rocky all featured powerful supporting actor performances. But when the votes were all tallied up, the little gold statuette actually went to Jason Robards for his commanding turn in All the President's Men. Compared to his competitors, Robards' performance as Washington Post editor Ben Bradley is incredibly understated. He's a prickly perfectionist, an editor who drives his reporters hard, and callously edits their work. But the man's heart is in the right place. Sure, he's brash, but he just wants a solid story, reporting that'll withstand the scrutiny of everybody from Joe Schmo to the President of the United States. I can't do the reporting for my reporters, which means I have to trust them. And I hate trusting anybody. Robards is only on screen for about 14 minutes, but that was more than enough to impress the Academy. They say good things come to those who wait, and that's especially true for Jack Palance. The Hollywood veteran was nominated for Best Supporting Actor in 1952 for his performance as a murderous husband in Sudden Fear. Sadly, Palance didn't win that year, but he got a second chance in 1953, earning another nomination for his work as a black-clad gunslinger in Shane. But once again, Palance was robbed for Oscar glory, and he would have to wait nearly 40 more years before getting that gold. Palance would finally get his due thanks to his performance in City Slickers, a 1991 comedy that follows three city dwellers who spend a vacation at a dude ranch. During their quest to become cowboys, they meet a grizzled old ranch hand by the name of Curly Washburn. Did you see that guy? That is the toughest man I've ever seen in my life. Palance is only on screen for around 12 minutes, but his tough as nails performance would nab him the best supporting actor Oscar. <laughs> This man owes you an apology. Judy Dench is perhaps the most British woman who's ever lived. Everything about her just radiates nobility. So it's no wonder that Dench won an Oscar for a performance as Queen Elizabeth I in Shakespeare in Love. Even though she's only on screen for three scenes, it's a role she was born to play. Whenever she stands, every knee bows. She's commanding and demanding, her humor is biting, and her words cut to the bone. What do you love so much? Your Majesty. Speak up, girl. I know who I am. But beneath that powdered, powerful exterior, there's a woman with a love for theater and a sympathy for our star-crossed lovers, William Shakespeare and Viola. Alternately hilarious and powerful, Dench only appears in only eight minutes of the film, but she owns all of them. A complicated royal and a deus ex machina rolled into one, Dench's Queen Elizabeth is worthy of both allegiance and awards. I thought you were here because you had none. <laughs> In 1976, director Sidney Lumet created one of the darkest, most brilliant satires ever put to film, Network. The film holds up with incredible performances, but Beatrice Strait made Academy Award history by winning Best Supporting Actress with just five minutes of screen time. Strait plays Louise, the jilted wife of a TV executive. When her husband confesses to having an affair with a younger woman, Louise gives a Helen Brimstone sermon that no preacher will ever match. I'm your wife, dammit! 
And if you can't work up a winter passion for me, the least I require is respect and allegiance. Both embarrassed and filled with righteous anger, she lays into her husband hard, ripping him apart for his philandering before breaking down and admitting how much he's hurting her, and as icing on the acting cake as she ends the scene actually feeling sorry for her husband, knowing that his new affair will just leave him feeling a lot of grief. All in all, Straight only shows up in network for 5 minutes and 40 seconds. To this day, no one has beaten Straight's incredible record, and chances are good that she'll hold on to that honor for a long, long time. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.